Olivia Munson told a 911 operator that she shot Patricia Thomas after Thomas hit her in the stomach. And defense attorneys say that Thomas was dangerous and violent and that she physically and verbally abused Munson during the course of their relationship. So we want to explore the domestic abuse angle in this case. So we've got with us forensic psychologist Dr. Cheryl Aris, who joins us now from Los Angeles. And folks, she and her colleague wrote what became the nation's first court-approved program for same-sex batterers. Uh, Dr. Aris, so great to have you with us. Thank you. Good to be here. Now, Dr. Aris, uh, talk to us about the stories you've seen involving domestic violence. Are there differences between couples of the same sex versus couples of different sexes? Are there issues that come up that are different between the two? Well, a lot of the issues are very similar. The, the rates of domestic violence are about the same in heterosexual and same-sex couples, which is about one in three. Um, there are a lot of differences, I think, in that with same-sex couples, the, the violence is very often misunderstood by people as uh, um, a fair fight between equals or not really understanding the dynamics that happen because the dynamics are the same in, uh, in both kinds of couples, which is really a, a pattern of systematic um, uh, controlling, manipulative, and uh, punishing behaviors by one person to control the behavior of another. And uh, that can happen with heterosexual couples, and it can happen with gay couples. But it's much more difficult for um, people to get services and to get help. And I think you see in the 911 call uh, that Cynthia Monson didn't reveal the nature of their relationship, I think in part because um, that's uh, uh, revealing one's sexual orientation. That's always a big decision for uh, a gay or lesbian person to do and runs the risk of bias and uh, uh, danger. So that can color her entire conversation, and that's a hurdle that she has to face just when she's calling 911 straight off the bat. Absolutely. All right. Well, Cynthia Monson's daughter walked into the house while Monson was on the phone with a 911 operator. Wow. You know, Dr. Arad, as I look at this, what's interesting about this case is uh, Keisha just mentioned her stepfather. There were some situations mm -hmm. there, uh, at least allegations of abuse. But also, they're not necessarily living in the same place, Ms. Munson and Ms. Thomas, but there's this sense that Cynthia Munson feels trapped. She's a mental health professional. Does anything yes. strike you as odd about this? Was she really trapped in this relationship? And if so, why? Well, I, I think, you know, we have these two women, one with a, a, a history of, uh, from what I've looked at in the record, a history of violence against um, other adults, animals, children, uh, the other with uh, reports of her being very passive and, and um, uh, kind of a docile kind of person, uh, Cynthia Munson. Um, I think that being a mental health professional, I, I really wonder whether, even though she cared very much about this woman, whether she perhaps didn't allow her to, to move in and live with her because of her concerns about the violence. But wouldn't, you, um, but wouldn't you as a mental health professional then afford yourself of the, the things that you know of in the system to get help to handle this problem rather than put yourself in a situation with someone that at least you're saying on videotape and, and on audio tape that you know is dangerous and has come after you before? Yes, well people who are in domestic violence situations are not there because they enjoy the violence obviously but there is a cycle where there's a, a tension building phase and then there's the violent episode and then there's this honeymoon period so right at the moment when the person is most likely to leave that's when the other person says i'm so sorry i'll never do it again mm -hmm. uh and is it, it becomes the person that they you know had always wanted and and thought the person to be and actually when uh, you know cynthia monson did end this relationship because of violence several times and was not in the relationship when the violent this episode occurred, um, but I think it's important to note the additional hurdles that a gay and lesbian couples face mm -hmm. in that um, there are no shelters specifically for same-sex uh, victims of battering. Um, very often with lesbian couples, the abuser is um, mistakenly housed along with the victim, and, and people who work in domestic violence have trouble uh, identifying who the abuser is in same-sex couples where wow. they don't so much with men and women and um, okay so it seems like there uh, is a know. very there there is a disparate at least you're saying 
with there being no shelters, there's, there, there may be different treatment here uh, in terms of those people, yes. and in terms of people trying to get help in those same sex relationships. Now, let me ask you one other question here, right. because this is, this is a very tense subject. You've got six children involved, including young yeah. children. What happens to the children in domestic violence situations such as this? How did they grow up? How did they survive? Well, it's, it's very, very traumatic for children to witness this kind of violence. Um, even if the children aren't being physically um, assaulted themselves. Um, and I think in this case, one of the son had said that um, he had been beaten um, by uh, Patricia, Mon uh, Patricia Thomas. Um, even without physical abuse, the, uh, the trauma of even just witnessing that violence puts very often puts kids at risk of either growing up to become abusers themselves or of becoming victims themselves. So that can get repeated and sort of passed down through generations of feeling like this is a, um, this is just how relationships are. Okay, and Dr. Arad, I just have one more quick question for you. You mentioned how people, I thought this was so important, you mentioned how people mm -hmm. in same-sex relationships who are in these kinds of situations, they have a hard time getting the same kind of help that people who are not of the same sex and in a relationship mm -hmm. and experiencing domestic violence. What's the one important answer here? You mentioned that there were no shelters, maybe different treatment. What is the one most important thing that needs to happen to make sure they're given the same uh, services and things that they need well, in order to survive? Uh, a great question, Ryan. I, I think that um, gay and lesbian people need to have the same civil rights that the rest of us enjoy. Um, you know, they, these women live in a state that uh, doesn't allow lesbian couples to marry, doesn't allow them to adopt children. Uh, what's really tragic about this is that there really didn't seem to be legal recourse if, uh, if they were adopted with the idea of them being both women's children. Um, if this were a man and a woman, they could have gone to court. There could have been a custody evaluation. Is it safe or advisable for the children to visit with both parents? Mm. Um, all those things were not available to these two women in this situation. That's a good and, point, Dr. Um, Arad. It could yeah. have absolutely given another solution in this instance. Dr. Arad, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.